when I first came into the studio, um, especially when I'm working with a new group of dancers, I want to absorb from them. And mm -hmm. so I tried to come in with a fairly open mind about what direction um, the buzz dancers would take me in. And I think the, the only thing that was a shred in my mind when I first arrived that has remained was a sort of um, interest in how Australia feels a little bit like the frontier to me. I mean, it's a, you know, so I was thinking, I'm from, I'm from California, and I was thinking a little bit about Mexico and cowboys and desert and frontier. My associations with frontier is, a, you know, or pioneerism or something, and the dryness of it and the stoicness of it and, all, and the romanticism of it, actually. So the truth is the, the dancers themselves are very, very interesting individual um, artists, and, and each of them you know, sort of f like cultivated and fertilized their own role in the piece right from the beginning. And, and I followed them in these different directions. So I feel like they're the ones who formed it. Even though I come around to these different commissions and I work with different people and they influence me in different directions, I feel like my basic obsessional issues remain the same. And maybe this is part of being an artist and you have to accept it over time. Like growing up watching my father, he's an etcher, a printmaker, there's always dead fish somewhere, you know, in there. And I used to think, why is he so interested in fish that are dying? And now I just recognize that it's part of his voice. Like, it's it's a, such a powerful symbol for him. So I don't question why it's there anymore. I just know that it, it's part of his language. So in my work, I feel like one of the things I always deal with is how, how, you, how an individual gets expressed, what it is to remain an individual even when you're in relationship to another person. So autonomy, identity, individuality, and then how you're reckoning with the fact that you have other people in the space. In, in, in infringing on your space, shifting the way you are in the world, and how you handle that, and whether you can soften and merge and have compassion, or whether you need to pull against in order to retain your identity. So those issues are sort of always present in the work, and they're definitely dancers have been terrific and t really incredibly like focused and conscientious about conscientious isn't the word they've been brave about sticking you know nose to the grindstone sticking with the material sweating through the difficulties of it um, hanging on when something doesn't make sense trying to stay patient with each other when everything's frustrating and the answers aren't evident yet and that that part for me is very moving I mean I feel I feel enormous respect for dancers because they can stick to these complicated, you know, difficult interactions. The body doesn't lie. If you're working with your body, if you're if you're working with your body, then your feelings are going to come to the surface. When 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 I'm going back into process with my company and we're trying to explore very much a new work, I let the process dictate its own length in a way because the piece is over time the piece is speaking back to me about what it needs and I feel like in this situation where I have very concrete structures mm -hmm. I'm making use of all my tools to find a way to make the piece that suits the moment and the context and the situation. I, I don't know how to express this without sounding corny but I feel incredibly blessed to, to work with dancers because um, to me they're, they're some of the bravest artists because they're combining um, all the and rigor of being an athlete with all the intellectual, emotional pressure of being an artist. And they're combining all of that together and it's a, it's a very powerful combination. I think, um, you know, the way athletes think, dancers think very similarly to athletes in certain ways. And then I also, I ask dancers to be really intellectually engaged in the process mm -hmm. and to bring a lot of themselves and their own reasons for why they're doing this to my process. So I'm actually very demanding about that. They, they're not allowed to, um, they're not allowed to, they're not asked to be receptacles at all. They're asked to be very prominent. And so I've been actually really interested to see, um, you know, it's always that, that, you know, when you work with a new group of dancers, it's always that uh, refining process of sensing how you are interpreted as an artist and how the transfer takes place and how to facilitate the transfer of a voice because, especially because I'm asking the dancers to contribute so much
language in the process of making the work, um, how I frame it with my own voice and how quickly that process can happen. And that's been really interesting here because I feel like these dancers have just like sucked it in and chewed on it and soaked it up very, very quickly. And, and now I'm waiting to see what they're going to tell me about my work that I don't already know. I mean, I think, I, I think, well, I think I'm aiming at different things with different works, but what I think the audience will sense from this particular piece and from this particular group of dancers, because of the way they're interpreting this material, because of the artists that they are, I think they're going to sense, you know, intense commitment and, and um, passion, frankly. They're very passionate, all of them, in different ways. They've manifested differently, but I think they're all um, um, like rabid movers and that the audience is going to feel swept up in that because they're very...